I want to laugh at why Nikki Haley didn't answer your question, which was about looking at families in the eye. In the last debate, she made fun of me for actually joining TikTok while her own daughter was actually using the app for a long time. So you might want to take care of your family first. Leave my before daughter out of your your voice. Your adult daughter. The next generation of Americans are using it. And that's actually the point. You have her supporters propping her up. That's fine. Here's the truth. You're just the scum. easy answer is actually to say that we're just going to ban one app. We got to go further. We have to ban any U.S. company actually transferring U.S. data to the Chinese. A lot of fiery moments at last night's third presidential primary debate for the Republican Party. And so for much more on what all happened last night, I want to bring our political commentators, both David Thomas, Fletcher Smith. Gentlemen, always a pleasure having always you in. Pleasure. David, let's go and start with you. Okay. Your reaction to last night, it seemed like we had Vivek Ramaswamy up there. He was critical of the Republican Party as a whole. But you've got five candidates well behind the frontrunner Donald Trump. What was your observation from last well, night? Well, he polled after, uh, after it was all over at about... 73% uh, saying that he won the debate. Now, I didn't sort of think so because I, I, I thought of him I'm, and I'm thinking of him as, as too brass. I mean, just he's uh, kind of over the top in, in, in attacks and things like that. But that's apparently not how most of the public are seeing him because he is, he is countering the establishment. And so everybody up on that stage basically establishment, but um, he's not, and so he's going after him. And for that reason, I think people like him. Real quick, though, you said counter the establishment, but that's Trump's stance. Trump was the one who countered the establishment. And so, you know, how, how is any of those five Do you expect to, to... consistency in these debates? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, how are they able to gain any ground on the front runner, Donald Trump? I, th I think what you've got to do is not worry about Trump and you don't say anything bad about him. And you say he did a lot of good things and then you go on to what you would do if you were president. Now this is the, the dance here that's going on, these three debates. It's not for president, it's for who's gonna be number two on the ticket and who's gonna be serving uh, in the cabinet. And, and, and Fletcher and I were talking about that you know, just a little while ago. Uh, but, but I think if you can sort of parse it out a little bit, yeah. what's really going on is who is going to be chosen for vice president, and it would surprise me if it's not Nikki. Okay, uh, Fletcher, yes. this debate came on the heels of a pretty big Tuesday for Democrats. Uh, we saw a lot of those smaller elections uh, across the nation, but you know it, it kind of tilted towards le the left. What were your takeaways bringing that into perspective, okay, especially you, with the debate stage? When you look at Ohio, yeah. you look at Kansas, you look at Virginia, people across the line don't want the government taking away their freedoms, and especially women. On the abortion issue, the Republicans are off the chart on wanting to ban abortion because it's a health care issue, and women know it. And women know that if you have a DNC and a doctor can't treat you and the doctor goes to jail, they could die in a parking lot, or a 10-year-old kid who gets raped by his uncle or her uncle, mm -hmm. and you can't get an abortion under those circumstances. They're not going with the Republicans on that issue. And so you saw in Virginia, you saw in Kentucky with the election, re-election of Bashir, that the American people, about 73%, believe that abortion should be legal. How much of a factor do you think abortion will play leading into 2024? Because, I mean, we, we still have a ways until the Iowa caucuses, and then, of course, we have the first and South primary here in South Carolina coming up in February. How much do you think abortion is going to play a role in the race for 2020? Well, you see, it wasn't about economics on Tuesday night. Right. So what happens is you got, you got election deniers and people who wanted to overturn the government on January 6th. So democracy is on the ballot and abortion is going to play a key role in the 2024 election all across this country. And so you're going to see a realignment. And I think those uh, white Republican ladies and men living in the suburbs in those key battleground states, they're going to go Democratic. David, well, it's kind, of, kind of a key to it. I was talking to Senator Danny Verdon from uh, Lawrence County about this, and he said, David, remember three, uh, th th this, the 13, 13 words. 13 words. If Trump is not on the ballot, Trump supporters will not vote. 13, mm. I think that counts to 13. But his point was, uh, we hadn't seen it all yet. We're seeing little, little, little snippets. We're seeing little, little quick shots of what might happen. But you, we're, we're not going to understand the full picture and load until Donald Trump is out there himself as the nominee, assuming he gets the nomination. Yeah, they, but they're, the they're other thing true. about it is the Republicans are interesting because on one end they have these high moral standards about Democrats, you know, breaking the law. 
but you have a president that has 91 indictments in several different cases. He's been called by a judge in New York, a rapist, and still the Republicans are saying this is God guy. So the question is going to be on the polling that just came out uh, with the New York Times and Siena, if he's convicted and he's the nominee, then a lot of people are not going to vote for him even though they support him. We've seen from Quinnipiac University polling, they, Trump's needle hasn't shifted downward at all. No. It's, it's sustained it's August, Re September, and November. Remember we talked about this about three months ago when the indictment started and we all sort of agreed, well you and I sort of agree, if this actually happens, if, if these things actually go through and he's tried, he's got the nomination. That's the that's the boomerang effect of what is going on. Uh, so I, I I think uh, everybody's going to have to live with uh, what the Democrats have decided to do, and that's you know call out the uh, call out the lawyers and see if we can derail him that way. Okay, it's going to get very interesting. We've followed it very closely, and gentlemen, you'll be here with us the entire way. So, thank you. David Thomas, Fletcher Smith, thank you. As thank always. you, Justin. Thank you.